This is the first video lecture for section 1.1 for Math for Liberal Studies. We're going to spend this lecture talking about an example, and many of the concepts and things that we're going to be studying in this whole unit are going to be based on some real-world problems from real-world examples. So in this example, what we have here is a map of a neighborhood, and each of these lanes here, so these are streets, so this is a street, this right here is also a street, and the little dots, those are parking meters. So each of these little dots represents a parking meter. And then what our job is, is to check all of the parking meters in this little neighborhood. So what we're going to want to do is pick a place to start, pick an intersection to maybe park our car uh, or to start walking through this neighborhood, and walk up and down the streets, checking our parking meters as we go. But here's the important part. What we want to do is we want to do this efficiently. We want to do this without retracing our steps, right? So we want to have a plan and we want to try to figure out what we want to do before we do it so that we don't end up walking back and forth along streets that we've already done. So we're going to go from intersection to intersection. And again, our goals are to do three things. Check all of the meters in the neighborhood. So don't we don't want to leave any unchecked. But we also don't want to duplicate effort. We don't want to check any of the rows of meters twice. And we also want to return to our starting point. So let's just give this a try, right? So let's just pick a place to start and see what happens, right? So a, a good way to start thinking about problems is to start just with trial and error. So let's start up here in the upper left-hand corner. And let's go to the right. So let's go this direction. So that means that all of these parking meters along this row, those have all been checked, OK? Uh, let's keep going to the right. OK, so let's go over here. And that means that we're going to check all of these meters again. Uh, let's go down. And now here we have a choice, right, because there's parking meters on both sides of the street. So we can't check both. We can imagine that maybe the street is really wide and we can't see across the street as we walk down. So we have to pick one of the rows of meters to check. So I'll go ahead and check the uh, far side of the street here. And let's see, we're just kind of playing around here. Let's go left. I'll check these meters. And then let's go down. That checks these. Let's go left again. Again, we have a choice. We've got to pick one of these rows of meters to check. So I'll check the upper side of the street this time. I'll go up. And let's go back to the start. And that checks these meters. So how did we do? Well, we got back to the start. And we checked a lot of the meters in the neighborhood. But we missed some, right? So we missed all of these in here. We missed these. We missed these. We missed a bunch, right? So we didn't actually solve our problem. We didn't do the thing that we were hoping to do. But just because we didn't find a solution on our first try doesn't mean that there is no solution. So let's try again. So let's pick a different place to start. Maybe that was our problem. Uh, so let's start down here. So let's start here down at the bottom. And let's pick a different direction to go. Well, uh, let, let's go to the right. OK, so let's do these meters here. Again, we're just kind of playing around with this. Let's go down. That checks these meters. Let's go left. Again, we have to pick one of these rows of meters. This time I'll do these down here. Let's try those. And then I can go up, and that checks these meters. Now I've returned to my starting position, but notice that I can still go, right? So I can if I, I can't go to the right again because that would retrace my steps, but I can go up because I've got different meters that I haven't checked going this way. And I can go to the right. Let's go to the right again. That checks these. And let's see, I can go down and that checks these meters. And now I can go back up because I've got meters on the other side of the street. Uh, but now I'm stuck, right? So now I'm stuck at this intersection because there's no way for me to get out. I can spell. There we go. Uh, there's no way for me to get out of that intersection without retracing my steps. So that would be where my solution attempt in this case would stop. So it's OK to return to an intersection we've already visited as long as we can leave along a different path, right? So we don't get stuck unless we run out of exits, unless we run out of ways to leave that uh, intersection. And we can walk down the same street multiple times if there are multiple rows of meters along that street. So those are things to keep in mind as you're working through solutions to these problems. So now you give it a try. We haven't had any luck with me just kind of playing around with it. So pause the video, 
or you know copy this little diagram onto a sheet of paper and give it a try a couple times try different starting points try different methods but again make sure that you're trying to check all of the meters without retracing your steps and returning to your starting point okay how'd you do well you probably weren't able to come up with a solution right it turns out that this problem this parking meter problem that we've been investigating doesn't actually have a solution although we're not actually sure why yet so let's get back to that so we could keep using trial and error but eventually like i said if we keep trying and failing we might think to ourselves well maybe this is unsolvable maybe maybe this is an impossible problem so to make it easier for us to understand why that might be we're going to use a model to represent this problem so what's a model a model is a mathematical tool that simplifies a problem, but keeps all of the necessary and important information. So a lot of times, if you've ever had to solve a word problem, like in an algebra class or something like that, and you had to come up with an equation based on a word problem, that's a model. You're taking all of those words and all of the information and boiling it down and simplifying it down to an algebraic expression. So we're going to do a different kind of model. The kind of model we're going to use is called a graph. And you can see it here. I've overlaid it over the neighborhood map that we've been working with. So what I've got here is big black dots called, a, each big black dot is called a vertex. Multiple vertex is called vertices. And then each row of the parking meters, I'm using those as connections between the dots. And those are called edges. So without the overlay, it makes it a little easier to see here. So each, black, each dot is a vertex. Multiple dots are called vertices. And then the connections between the dots, those are called edges. So to use the graph, well, the graph contains all of the information we need to solve our problem, because really all we need to know is how are the intersections related to each other and how many rows of meters are there between each intersection. We don't need to know the names of the streets. We don't need to know how long the streets are. All we need to know is those relationships between the intersections and the rows of the parking meters. So let's try again with our solution here, and let's do this side by side. So let's pick a different starting point. So maybe I'll start over here this time. So I'll start over there, and I'll indicate that that's my starting point by circling the vertex on the graph. So that dot that I've circled represents the intersection that I'm saying I'm going to start at. OK, so let's start by going up from there. So I'll check these meters. And so I can represent that by saying that I'm walking along this edge of my graph. And we can go back down. That checks these meters. And so I'm going back down along this edge of my graph. And I can, I'm can i not done yet. I didn't get stuck. So I'm going to go to the left. That checks these meters. So on my graph, I'm going along this path. And then I can go up. Again, I'm just kind of playing here. I'm not really going along with here with a plan. I'm just sort of saying, ah, what do I want to do next? Now I'll go left. And then I'll go down again on my graph. I'm just following that edge. And then I'll go right. Now I only have one choice here. Here I don't have any choices. I've got to go down. That's the only place I can go where I haven't, so I can uh, not retrace my steps. On my graph, I'm going down. Um, let's see, and I can go to the left. I'll check these meters. That means I'm looking at this edge of my graph. And I can go back to the right. And then I can go right again. That's this edge. And then I can go up. That checks these meters. And I return to my start, but I didn't quite do it. I've got a few meters that I didn't check, these up here and those down there. But the idea here, and, and again on my graph, I can see I didn't use that edge and I didn't use that edge. So the diagram on the right is a lot easier to draw, right? I can certainly draw dots and connect the dots. That's a lot easier for me to represent on my piece of paper rather than having to draw a complicated diagram with a bunch of streets and meters and things like that. So the graph is really useful because it simplifies the necessary information that I need to investigate my problem. So next time we're going to use graphs to study not just this problem, but lots of problems. And we're, But we're only going to use graphs. So we might start with a complicated set of information, but our first goal is going to be to figure out what's the graph that represents that problem. And eventually we're going to learn how to figure out whether parking meter problems have solutions and or whether they don't. 
And in the next lecture, we're going to establish some more vocabulary and get some more practice creating graphs from those real-world problems.